What's going on Godzilla Nation? This is our Godzilla and today's video is something a little bit different, something we've never done on the channel before, but it's something I've wanted to bring into the fold for a little while now. We're officially kicking off our first top 10 video, looking back at my top 10 video games of 2019. Before we get started, please bear in mind this is all based on my own personal opinion as well as being games that I have physically played throughout the year. So unfortunately, Death Stranding will not be in this top 10 list, purely because I'm yet to play it. I can assure you though, as a huge Norman Reedus fan, and those of you who know me can attest to how big of a Norman Reedus fan I am, and all the gameplay and stuff that I've seen online so far of this game, there is no question it would have comfortably made this list had I've gotten my hands on the game yet. However, I've got to do due justice to the games that I have played. So, I think it's time we got this list underway. But before we do so, two things. First of which, I want you guys to let me know in the comment section down below what your top 10 video games of 2019 were. I love always turning it over to you guys and hearing the responses that you guys have. We've got a passionate community growing here together. The God's Era Nation is growing each and every day. I couldn't be prouder to be leading this community. I couldn't be any happier to have you guys as part of this community. So let's get the discussion going down below. Your top 10 video games of 2019. The second point I want to make is I've got a pair of special mentions that don't make the list, but I still want to talk about them anyway. The first of which is Ancestors the Humankind Odyssey. It provided a unique take on the survival genre that I think is going to point future survival games in the right direction. Absolutely loved the fact of being able to go out and having to discover things and learn about the world as you went on and it was just brilliantly put together. We did start a series of it to begin when it first came out on PC. I ran into some technical issues there. However, thanks to the people over at Private Division, Ancestors the Humankind Odyssey will be making a huge comeback now that I've been granted access to the console version. So keep your eyes peeled on the channel for when that hits. The second special mention and something that is going to be coming to the channel in the next couple of days is Planet Zoo. I played a video on the channel of the first career kind of mode installment that they gave as access for the beta. It went over well with you guys. I've had discussion with some of you on social media about what we can do with Planet Zoo. And I know that there is a solid few of you out there who have been looking forward to this finally being brought to the channel. I hope I don't disappoint you guys with the content that's coming. I've got some huge ideas of what we can do with this game. So keep your eyes peeled as I mentioned. When the new year hits, that's when the new series are going to begin. But now that we've got the special mentions out of the way, it's time to officially kick off the top 10 games of 2019 list. Beginning with number 10. In the number 10 slot, and for those of you who have been following my content this year, it was definitely going to be making this list. Trover saves the universe. Justin Roiland was at his comedic finest when he pieced this together. You can tell the scripting of this fell into the pocket of exactly how he pieces together the Rick and Morty TV series. He just gets into a booth, starts rambling, and magic happens. I'm a huge fan of Rick and Morty, so it was right in my wheelhouse with the crude in-your-face comedy. However, if you don't have that kind of twisted sense of humor or an appreciation for that type of comedy, it might fall a little bit short with you guys. However, well and truly did not fall short with myself and I think the biggest drawing point for this game was the fact that even though it was created to be experienced as a virtual reality title making it playable without requiring a VR headset was a masterstroke move it opened up the playing audience 
to a hell of a lot more people. Not everyone can afford a VR headset. I personally still don't have one. I want to get one, but it was good to be able to appreciate a title like Trover Saves the Universe without being niched into requiring certain hardware to play it. Absolutely fantastic. And I know a lot of you enjoyed Trover Saves the Universe as well. So quite comfortably and quite happily, he slots in at number 10. At number 9, we have the first horror title for this top 10 list, and that is The Blair Witch. I said it throughout the entire series when I played this on the channel, and those of you who did follow the series would be able to attest to it, but if you didn't, Blair Witch, in my opinion, is one of the best atmospheric horror games I have played in a very long time. It doesn't need to be constantly in your face with jump scares or visceral blood, guts, and gore. It was more of an atmospheric, psychological game that the Blair Witch film series obviously presents to us as viewers. Being able to experience that from a video game perspective was absolutely brilliant, and it had everything that makes a solid horror game. You had the suspense, you had the atmosphere, you still had plenty of jump scares even though they weren't right up in your face. The storyline was fleshed out really well and not knowing what your character really was all about and experiencing the character growth from beginning to end was incredible. I loved being able to slowly discover the backstory for your character as the game progressed. And the fact that there was multiple endings of which the entire game pushed you into getting the worst ending possible, which was the ending I received. That was brilliantly done as well. I haven't yet to be reminded of a game that purposefully pushes you in the wrong direction to get the worst outcome. Quite comfortably, not only one of the best games i played all year, but one of the best horror titles, as I've mentioned, that I have played in a very long time. So I was very happy to put this on my top 10 list. At number 8, we come in with a title that was big in my childhood and I couldn't wait to dive back into as soon as I realised it was being remade and brought to current gen consoles and that's Crash Team Racing. Boy did they take this and hit this out of the park. I am absolutely in love with this game. More so because I got to experience it online with my friends. I played with mates that haven't played it before I played with mates that grew up with it as well, so it was good to see different takes, you know, from different angles, different perspectives. I love the customization this game offers, and even though some people have taken a negative stance about the game adding Wampa coin purchasing and, you know, it's negative because of microtransactions, it's all on a cosmetic value. It's not a pay-to-win kind of game. You're only purchasing coins if you want to buy some skins or you want to color your card a little bit differently or you want some stickers or perhaps you want to purchase a character that you don't currently have unlocked, which in the beginning, they did have different like attributes for speed or turning ratio or acceleration. So you could think maybe, okay, it is kind of pay to win, but then they modified the game so you can now select what is boosted with each character, so it's now a level playing field. In that case, I think microtransactions are perfectly fine. There was no way I was compiling a top 10 list of my favourite games for 2019 and leaving Crash Team Racing off of it. Such a great game, I'm happy it actually got... I'm pretty sure it was best sporting game of 2019, sports slash racing game. Well deserved of that title and well-deserved to sit on my top 10 list. Coming in at number 7, we have Pokemon Sword and Shield, and I think a lot of you would have seen this coming. I am a huge Pokemon fan. I have been since Red and Blue first came out in 1996, and it's no different now as a 29-year-old adult still loving the franchise as much as I did when it first came out. And Sword and Shield 
was absolutely phenomenal. It copped a lot of flack for a lot of things in the beginning. They cut the national decks down and they've removed some Pokemon. People were nitpicking the slightest little things in this game, like a shadow was out of place or all the kind of interactions with the NPCs were animations that we've seen in the past, move animations that we've seen in the past, but this is taking the franchise in the right direction. We've been playing Pokemon Shield on the channel. You guys have been loving it. I've been loving it. There is so much about this game to love. And there are many facets of this game that I hope translate into future installments. I love the take on the gym challenge. I would love to see that move on to further installments. The wild area, I'm hoping, is the beginning of what will be an open world Pokemon game. That has been my wish as a Pokemon fan for a very long time. I'm hoping this is a step in the right direction. But Pokemon Sword and Shield coming in at number 7. At number 6 comes the game that has been slated as Game of the Year, so it is a little bit down on my list. But I've got Sekiro Shadows Die twice coming in in this slot. That doesn't mean I didn't think it was a great game, because I've found it quite enjoyable. I've always liked what the games like Dark Souls and Bloodborne presented. And this game, I can assure you, that it created so much rage within myself that I just wanted to pick up my console and throw it right through my bedroom window. I just feel it didn't live up to being the best game of the year. Now, this is all based on personal opinion. I said that at the beginning. And I know there's a lot of you out there that feel that this was game of the year. I am not discrediting your opinion at all. On a personal level, I got more enjoyment out of the next five games that comprise my top five, more so than I did from Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. But with that being said, as I've already mentioned, that does not take away from the fact that this is a great game. I especially love the fact that this game didn't shy away from throwing you into the deep end to kick things off. I actually find games like that quite enjoyable. So having to take on all these tough opponents right from the get-go, I actually found quite refreshing. I'm curious to see where this game slots on your list when it comes to letting me know in the comment section down below. But nonetheless, Sekiro still slots in on my list at number 6. To kick off my top 5, we have The Outer Worlds. I haven't brought this to the channel yet, I know some of you have been really keen to see this hit the channel, but I have absolutely loved playing this game. You all know I'm a big fan of Fallout and the Fallout series. So being able to play a game that felt like Fallout, but in an outer space adventure, absolutely incredible. As soon as I started the game, created my character, I did whatever it took to become the biggest badass outlaw ever. Edgewater is the first town you come across within probably the first 20 minutes of the game. By that point, I had already shot every NPC in the face that I could find and killed the mayor of Edgewater as well. I was a social pariah, everybody was out to kill me, and I absolutely loved it. Why? Because so many games niche you into needing to be the hero when you get the option to be either the hero or the villain, I'm going to be able to jump into that villain slot quite comfortably. It's why I enjoy games like Infamous and, you know, Fallout 4 and those type of games that present with you the opportunity of turning against the norm and being an absolute badass. I haven't gotten deep into the game, but I am looking forward to seeing what this game continues to offer myself as I dive deeper. So at number five, the Outer Worlds locks in its position. At number four, we have a game that we are currently playing on the channel, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. 
Now, for those of you who have been big time gamers, especially when it comes to the Star Wars gaming franchise, no denying the fact that EA Games has ruined the Star Wars franchise for a very long time. My personal opinion, I know a lot of people are backing me on that opinion as well. Battlefront and Battlefront 2 were serviceable, but they were far from the games that the franchise needed to kick things up another gear. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order for me has restored faith in the fact that we are finally getting a gaming franchise from the Star Wars universe that is heading in the right direction. There's already rumor that we're getting a sequel to this game, and personally, I cannot wait to get my hands on it if that's the case, because Jedi Fallen Order was absolutely beautiful. Being able to see so many different worlds within the universe, each presenting its own, you know, different issues and different sceneries to take in. It was so immersive. The customization was good. It didn't feel grindy looking for all those customizable items that you could find. It was actually quite enjoyable going back to another world that you'd already gone to and using a power that you didn't have at the time to be able to further yourself within that particular world. I'm having so much fun with this game. Absolutely incredible. If you pick up a game before the end of the year and you want to play something that defined this year as a whole, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is definitely a game you should get your hands on, especially if you are a Star Wars fan. So locking in number four, we've got Star Wars. Heading over to the number three slot, and I think a lot of you who have been supporting the channel would have known this game was going to pop up. Days Gone. Absolutely incredible. I've likened it to The Last of Us a few times when it comes to the storytelling and the characterization, and I'm going to do it again, because The Last of Us, to me, stands up as one of the best video games of all time, especially when it comes to the storytelling, and Days Gone had a story that reminded me so much of the storytelling tropes that we saw with The Last of Us. I loved the character development from start to finish, whether we look at Deacon St. John, or we look at Sarah, or we look at Boozer, or even Ricky. Just seeing the development of those characters from beginning to end, and the journeys they all went through, and the, ch the little changes and nuances that we see it was just really, really well done. The only gripe I have with it is so many games currently that are coming out in the horror genre are niche towards zombies. And I know that's put a lot of people off, but I really feel Days Gone did enough in its own right to set it apart from all those other zombie-based horror games that are coming out. They didn't just have those zombies. They threw so much at you in that universe that you didn't know what was going to attack you. You had the zombies, and the, you had different incarnations of the zombies, but then you had the marauders that would come at you. You had the rippers, you had bears, you had mountain lions, you then had those ravens that were coming at you. It was good to have a solid list of enemies that would just pop up out of nowhere and take you on. Especially when it came to the horde system of Days Gone, which is where I think they absolutely knocked this game out of the park. You could just be walking around, having a pleasant stroll through the mountains, and then all of a sudden, three to five hundred Freakers are running at you, and you've got no way of surviving an encounter like that at all. It was brilliantly done. Another game on my list that copped a lot of heat, but personally, I fell in love with this game, and as soon as I started putting this list together, I knew quite comfortably it would be on the higher end of the list. So for me, I loved it, don't know about you guys, but it locks in my number three slot. With two games to go, my number two slot gets locked up by Borderlands 3. What an experience. I absolutely loved it. I have been waiting a very long time for Borderlands 3 to drop. I love the art style of the series, I love the comedy that the game brings, especially with some of the creations weapon-wise. Like having a unicorn bomb? That's absolutely insane! I just love that this game breaks away from traditional 
first person shooters and gives you an experience that is unique and it doesn't fall into being a monotonous grind. I personally found it quite enjoyable going back and taking on the bosses again and again and again in order to pick up those legendary items. It might have made it a little bit easier in the early parts, but being able to pick up like all the customizational like faces and body parts and weapons and all that stuff has always been one of the biggest parts of Borderlands that I've enjoyed. Borderlands 3 was absolutely incredible. I knew it wouldn't disappoint. I feel the ending of the game has opened itself to potentially having another Borderlands game inserted into the franchise. My personal opinion, if they did that, I'm all for it, provided we don't have to wait as long as we did for Borderlands 3, because that wait was absolutely incredible. But with the number 2 slot now out of the way, there is only room for one more game on this list. And I think for those of you who well and truly know me, you know exactly where I'm about to take this with our number 1 slot. At number 1, without a shadow of a doubt, my game of the year was the Resident Evil 2 Remake. Now, a lot of you are probably rolling your eyes at home saying that there were games that were well and truly better than Resident Evil 2. But for me, personally, being able to relive a game that I played as a kid, but having new elements added to it that make it stand up on its own two feet as an individual installment into the franchise was absolutely incredible. Resident Evil 2 is one of my favorite you know, installations of the Resident Evil franchise, but is also one of my favorite PlayStation 1 games of all time. So as soon as they announced that remake, I was all about it. I knew I would love it. I did not think I would fall in love with it as much as I did. The horror was on point. The characterization of the characters, not only that you controlled, but the NPC characters was absolutely brilliant. Being able to control Ada Wong and Sherry Birkin for more than just a five minute period like the original game and giving them a bigger part to play this time around was brilliant. It was all incredible and the fact that we got to play this game with current gen graphics and we got to see things like William Birkin transforming throughout the game in such a visceral way was incredible. I do have some gripes about this game, one of them being the exclusion of monsters like the big spiders down in the sewers. It's only minor things like that, but so pumped that they brought this game into the fold. Even more so now that I had a feeling that this would kickstart the Resident Evil 3 Nemesis remake, which has now been announced as well. Cannot wait to get my hands on that. But I think all of you knew this was coming. If you've been on this channel for a while and you've been watching the Resident Evil content I've put out, you would all know, gaming-wise, Resident Evil has always been my favourite franchise of all time. So from that aspect, maybe a little bit biased on this list being number one, but when it came to voting for Game of the Year with the options we had, Resident Evil 2 Remake always got my vote. I voted on it whenever I could. Well and truly has been the best experience I've had personally not only because I'm a huge Resident Evil fan, but mechanically, graphically, the script, the voice acting, the actual gameplay itself, everything to me was done on a whole other level. I feel if I probably had dove into the Outer Worlds a bit more, or played Death Stranding, this could have potentially dropped out of the number one slot, but you got to roll with what you've got. And to me, on a personal level, as a gamer and as a fan of the franchise, Resident Evil was the best game I played all year. I called it at the beginning of the year when we played it that it would get a nomination I hoped for Game of the Year because that's how much I enjoyed it. It got that nomination. I voted for it. It might not have won. But when it comes to my top 10 games of 2019, it comfortably wins the number one slot. I'm curious to know what your top 10 games of 2019 were, so don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below, as well as letting you guys know 
over the next couple of days you are going to see different top 10 lists dropping. We've just done my top 10 video games of 2019. So we're going to do my top 10 worst slash disappointing games of 2019. My top 10 games of the decade. As well as my top 10 most anticipated video game releases for 2020. I am hoping that this top 10 list series that we're beginning continue on 2020 and beyond. And we're not just going to niche it to video games, we can break into different things as well. I'm just wanting to do some different things on the channel that step away from playing video games. Having the option to talk about video games instead of playing it, having the option to look at other things I enjoy. I'm a huge horror fan, so being able to dive into horror films and stuff like that I think would be a big step in the right direction for the channel as well. I just want to mix things up while being able to interact and have fun with you all. I seriously cannot begin to thank you guys enough for all the support you have thrown behind this channel since we've started, especially within the last 12 months. I didn't think we'd be this close to a thousand subscribers, but we are, and that is attributed to all the support and love that you guys continue to show when you come here, and I seriously seriously am in debt to each and every one of you huge things for the channel moving forward i hope and i'm glad you guys are on this journey with me if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed hit that subscribe button and pledge your allegiance to the god zero nation in the process i can promise you it is a decision you will not regret but that's it from me guys i'm out of here and as always i will catch you guys next time.